Well, we're going to hear from Secretary Mayorkas about the plans at the border later this afternoon. He is down there. And by the way, happy Sanco de Mayo, uh, a day of great celebration. Not there, but throughout, throughout the country for all of us as well. So let's, let's talk about what the administration is doing, though. Uh, preparing for the people crossing the border, potentially doubling after the COVID restrictions are lifted next week. Uh, are they ready? Well, Andrea, we have been working hard as a community, lots of communication and collaboration uh, here in El Paso, not just among local leaders, but also with the Department of Homeland Security, uh, with FEMA and other partners. Um, we knew that this was going to be a tremendous challenge. And even before the lifting of Title 42, um, we have we are seeing about 2,000 people on the street of El, streets of El Paso um, migrants who are surrounding an, uh, a church, Sacred Heart Church, um, who have been fed misinformation um, about what they can expect here in the United States, misinformation by their human traffickers, by the cartels. And Andrea, one of the things that, that no one is talking about that I think is really important to mention, uh, you know, FEMA has been incredible in providing financial resources to local partners, our local governments and NGOs. But the Republican Party um, Republican colleagues wrote into past legislation that we are not allowed to use FEMA funds or federal funds to provide emergency shelter for those vulnerable souls who are around the church because they are undocumented. So with that prohibition, um, we are having to look to private sources of funding, uh, philanthropic sources, to try to find enough money to, to provide emergency shelter for them. Next week, Republicans are going to be voting on a bill that will continue to exacerbate an already very challenging problem. Uh, they are looking to take away funding from NGOs that help partner with the federal government to alleviate the human suffering at, the, at our nation's front door. Um, so I'm afraid we're going in the wrong direction at the very moment when we need to be coming together in a bipartisan way to find real solutions, common sense solutions, that have evaded our country for decades, bringing us uh, to this crisis point. And what do you say to the, the people who applied for asylum? They've been waiting for months, for years to get into the U.S., and they are frustrated by what they see at the border. Yeah. I don't blame them for being frustrated. Um, I don't blame anyone for being frustrated. This is a very difficult situation. We need more resources for USCIS. We need more resources um, on a number of fronts. And this is why it's really important that my Republican colleagues join us in finding these true solutions. We've got to address the backlog. We, we do absolutely need to reform systems at our nation's front door. We are still utilizing the same systems we used and processes we used in the 1990s because Congress has refused to act. Um, the, the bill that's coming to the floor next week by my Republican colleagues again, Andrea, is going to make things worse. I'm very concerned um, about the way that they have limited funds. Last um, December, when we passed our appropriations bill, the administration asked for significantly more money in order to deal with this, with, with the lifting of Title 42. Um, largely, most Republicans voted against those, uh, those resources. They need to meet us halfway at the table. We have to find a real solution.